Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. In this episode, we'll be discussing a study that analyzed and assessed user behavior in the development of creating passwords. We also invite you to investigate and discover additional original content that is available on the CSIAC website. That is www.csiac.org. While there are numerous solutions currently available to address security problems, there are no existing measures that can adequately counteract careless behavior on the part of the user. Attackers are well aware of the human vulnerability aspect and therefore utilize a variety of approaches to exploit this major weakness. Obtaining a user's password is often a primary starting point for an attacker. The utilization of text-based passwords for user authentication is still a fairly common practice. However, given its prevalence, little research has been devoted to examining and evaluating the human decision-making process involved in creating and handling user passwords. User-generated passwords tend to be relatively weak and, to compound matters, they are often reused. Since the human factor has been flagged as a potential cybersecurity vulnerability, some steps have been taken to ameliorate this problem. One strategy of note is password management tools, which produce pseudo-random strings of letters, numbers, and special characters that are difficult to predict. Unfortunately, the use of password management tools is still the exception as opposed to the rule. Let's take a look at a study that addressed this particular issue. It was completed by 98 college students, all of whom expressed an interest in cybersecurity. The participants were composed of about 58% males and 42% females. About 61% were enrolled in a bachelor's program with 39% registered in a master's program with different backgrounds. The research study adhered to very strict data protection rights. The participants gave their written approval prior to as well as after the study. In addition, the students were able to opt out at any time during the course of the study and all their associated data was deleted from the pool. Pseudonyms were utilized for the participants to maintain their anonymity. In order to assure reliability in the study, two methods were employed. First, the students were given a test to confirm they understood the task. After the study, the participants were asked to disclose any false answers, which were then deleted. In the first part of the study, participants were asked about known password creation strategies. This information was categorized and scientifically analyzed. Over two thirds of the students identified their own individual strategy although they were specifically informed this was not necessary to do so. In the second part of the study, participants were asked about methods employed for creating passwords and the procedures for handling existing passwords. Both these aspects were then evaluated and rated. In the first part of the study, a third of the participants claiming lack of knowledge 
deem that their password behavior was not safe at all. On the other end, about 30% thought they both chose and handled passwords in a safe manner. Interestingly, while nearly 75% claimed to handle passwords appropriately, they later revealed using several methods that could enable other individuals to obtain them. In addition, over 14% of the participants shared their passwords with family or friends and didn't feel this made their passwords less safe. In the second part of the study, all password creation and handling strategies suggested were rated by the participants. The use of whole sentences and acronyms was considered totally safe by 39 and 56 participants, respectively. About 65% believed a poor strategy involved using as many numbers as possible and individuals' names. Two-thirds believed sending generated passwords through email was insecure, while the other one-third was unsure. Over 36% of the students thought copying and pasting a password was completely secure, while about 40% were unsure. 21 participants believed sharing a password with friends or family was secure, while 55 were unsure. In conclusion, this study revealed that while most participants reflect on the creation of their passwords, knowledge for safe password handling procedures is deficient. In addition, the study highlighted the fact that some users act contrary to their beliefs while realizing that their activity is unsafe. This particular study identified the need to better educate end users and the fact that further research on password behavior and security awareness is necessary. If you are interested in more detailed information on this particular topic, I invite you to check out the associated article on the CSIAC website. In addition, here are a list of references for further investigation. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content useful and informative. If you would like to provide us with feedback, please comment on this video or visit our website at www csiac.org. You can also find additional content to review there. Thank you. Did you know that CSIAC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? Come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up. Visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars 